Neoliberal success can be measured by the extent to which it has changed our common sense perception and understanding of how the world works. Followers of every, nearly every political persuasion must pay attention to this reality in their calculations. The experience of other countries, the UK, Australia, the United States, demonstrates the difficulties, liberal, used in the North American sense, and social democratic parties have had in moving away from neoliberalism after a period of neoliberal rule. In the US, Bill Clinton ended um, welfare as we know it after Ronald Reagan had targeted so fabricated welfare queens as a blight on society that had to be removed. To a large extent, Obama is following in this tradition and we could maybe talk about that if you'd like. Clinton incidentally launched an, an era of soaring inequality even more dramatic than what occurred under Ronald Reagan. If you can see, if, can you see the slide? The, okay, great, thanks. In Brit Britain, Tony Blair transformed the Labour Party into a more neoliberalist rendition to give him a better chance of winning elections. And it certainly worked. But when asked what her greatest achievement was, Margaret Thatcher replied, Tony Blair's new labor, because it meant that her reforms would live on after her. In Canada, we won't know how entrenched Harperism has become for quite a while. But looking back to what Keynes said about the gradual encroachment of ideas, I venture to say it's going to take a time before those ideas can change. And let me just um, see how long it takes for ideas to change. When Keynesianism ran into trouble in the 1970s, um, Milton Friedman was right on the scene with monetarism and his Montpelier and Society colleagues came forward with privatization, deregulation, and a whole host of reforms to, to get government out of the way of the market. And that became the prevailing reality over the next four decades. But in 2007 and 2008, with the financial meltdown and neoliberalism really crashed, no coherent set of alternatives was available to be put forward. So after a brief return to 1960s style stimulus spending, it was back to business as usual. As a result, Harper could continue emphasizing the market and the economy over all other values. So neoliberalism will not be replaced as a prevailing ideology until someone like Hayek and some organization like the Mont Pelerin Society have spent the time to construct an alternative set of ideas and made them familiar to secondhand dealers. Then when the next market failure occurs, they will be ready. However, we live today, okay, and we cannot wait until that, that e th those events might occur. So um, what I'm sure will come up in the uh, discussion is wh what are the things we can do today to move away from neoliberalism? And one of the things for sure is, is for progressives or liberals or social democrats, however you want to define yourself, to speak your values, right? What, what is it we believe? What is it we believe about social justice, collective action, and all those kinds of things? Because too frequently now, those parties are, are, have convinced themselves that they have to put the economy first. So when, um, when, I, when I first look at the NDP site for its childcare policy, what it said was Tom Mulcair knows how valuable childcare is to the economy. And for every $2 Every, for every dollar we spent on childcare, the economy will grow by two dollars. 
Now they've gone on to change that and put other values, more social values ahead of that. But it's an example of fearing that all we can do is, is speak to the consensus and that way things will never change. And so I just want to end with um, something that French poet Victor Hugo once famously said. There is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Well, actually, Hugo was wrong. What he should have said and what our study of neoliberalism leads us to conclude is that when the time comes, make sure you have the ideas. Thank you. Thank you.